I think that's another place we'll see some major innovation over the next 20 years. Those people hold significant advantage in the next decade. More automation uh, begin to happen. Hey, welcome to our YouTube. We're harvesting a soybean field today and just gonna talk about random farming topics. Uh, appreciate you watching. Like, share, and subscribe. Uh, technology is definitely going to be humongous going forward in the ag sector. We know that um, as environmental restrictions uh, begin to tighten, uh, like they already have in Europe, um, strategic placement of fertilizers is even going to be more important. And uh, definitely technology is going to help us get to that point where we can more precisely place fertilizers and uh, chemicals on our fields and you know as those regulations tighten um, it's going to be super critical that the manufacturers address those needs and so I think you know as we go forward uh, you're going to see a lot more emphasis placed on how nitrogen is applied and um, how much nitrogen is applied and uh, what type of source we'll be able to use. Um, I think, you know, the EPA has identified nitrogen as like a, a major pollutant, um, like when it's overused or when it uh, is over, I guess, over applied, I should say. And uh, we know that that's something that they're really uh, looking at hard. So, that's, I think in, in the technology space, that is going to be a major, um, uh, something major that the manufacturers are going to have to address going forward. And farmers are going to have to address it, and the manufacturers are going to have to address it going forward. Um, also, um, as, you know, as the farming population ages and uh, we have less and less people in the industry. Uh, you know, like there's been a, already a bigger move towards larger size equipment, so you have to have less operators on the farm. I think you'll see more automation uh, begin to happen. Um, and, you know, I, like what all is, uh, what all is going to be AI and, and how much are we going to be able to automate these machines. Uh, I think there's already a capability there by the manufacturers to do it, and I think we're a little reluctant to use it. Um, but at some point in the future, it's probably going to be uh, an issue we're not going to be able to get around, and we're going to have to move to that just because our lack of labor uh, in the industry. And, um, and then not only lack of labor, it's just uh, like a lot of the, the, the the farmers now, uh, there's not enough of us to have enough children, uh, you know, to be farming, so they don't grow up on the farm. They haven't been around uh, like a combine their entire life, and, you know, so their low trained operator uh, can a computer outperform an operator that hasn't spent his whole entire life on a combine, probably so. So, it's going to be... Uh, more and more important as we go forward, you know, for those problems to be addressed. I think uh, drone technology is another, going to be another major player. Um, right now there hasn't been, you know, large enough drones um, to take the place of large ground-driven sprayers, but I think as they perfect that technology and uh, the drones either get bigger or they can more effectively utilize an entire drone fleet where, you know, one drone may not be able to take the place of a humongous ground-driven sprayer, but five or six in a swarm, you know, might be able to take the place of that sprayer. So I think that's another place we'll see some major innovation over the next 20 years or 10 years or five years, I guess, even. Oh, yeah. 
battery technologies too. I'm sure as battery technology increases, we'll probably see uh, in the next decade our first um, battery powered combine or tractor. I don't think we've got there yet, but um, as they uh, further you know, innovate battery technology, that's probably something we'll all get to see too. You know, I think uh, analytics, it, uh, we, you know, we all can look at other industries and see how um, how much change there has been in, in analytics because of AI and them and AI able to identify trends and like uh, or micro trends things that maybe a normal uh, just human mind wouldn't notice. Um, to me, those analytics, you know, are going to be humongous going forward. And I think, you know, right now the farmers are at a semi-disadvantage because our big major corporations, uh, fertilizer suppliers, chemical manufacturers and such, have already employed that AI and, uh, and are making management decisions based on it where most of our farmers, including me, are making decisions based off uh, just real world knowledge that they see happening in the field and, uh, and what they've done in the past. And because of that, you know, the AI technology, I feel like that those corporations have an advantage on us right now, uh, just because we're not employing at the same level uh, the tools that we might actually have if we were to pursue them. So, um, to me, that's the most exciting thing, just because, uh, you know, I think if you are, a, you know, you really want to run your business uh, at the highest level, you have to, you have to notice very small trends and, or uh, very small emerging, um, like, I guess, advantages. Um, that computers would more likely identify rather than your mind could identify just because of their ability to uh, to run all those algorithms simultaneously or whatever. Our, our mind is just not capable of, of that type of thing. Or maybe some people's mind are, but mine is. <laughs> <laughs> if, you're, if you're interested in getting into the farming industry, um, I think definitely you need to have an eye to technology. Um, you know, you need to, you definitely need to be good with numbers because that's so important. But uh, also having a pretty good base level of understanding of computers and uh, and what you can utilize them for, uh, and just an overall tech knowledge would be good. So you know, like if you're looking for some like you're in school now and you're you're thinking hey I'm there may be a future for me in agriculture uh, you know while you're in school make sure you really pay close attention to any way you can further yourself in the tech space I feel like those people hold significant advantage in the next decade in the agri agriculture industry the people that will Ad, you know, adopt and utilize the technology that's available will flourish, and the ones that, uh, you know, hold it at arm's length and say it's not time yet um, will get left behind. That's that's kind of my thinking on it. You know, I'm sure there are probably some major innovations that seem like a good idea that probably aren't. Um, I'm probably not tech savvy enough to tell you what would what I feel like is good and what I feel like isn't. Um, you know, I I know that uh, a lot of the uh, analyzation tools that I've seen that like John Deere has come out with and stuff um, have been a significant help in identifying uh, you know reasons behind yield lag in certain fields. And, uh, things like that. Um, there's probably some, uh, you know, there's probably some of that, uh, some of the analytics, you know, 
may just be an overkill and you're, you, you can't get a whole lot out of it, but, you know, I'm probably not smart enough to tell you what, uh, what, you know, is, would be worth giving you a significant advantage and what's not. That's probably something we're all going to learn over the next few years is like, uh, what data is really worth a lot of money and then what data is just data, you know, it just won't really benefit you any. So. Okay. Also new technologies too, they were saying like, I'm kind of, you know, like for me just looking at drone technology, I see it as kind of uh, inefficient at this point where it takes so much manual labor by one operator to operate two or three drones flying in the same field um, looks like to me more work than what a ground rig would do so I feel like at this point uh, drones are kind of in that position where they haven't been the technology is not far enough advanced yet to be utilized super efficiently at your farm you know versus a ground rig better than nothing but not as good as a ground rig I guess is what I should say but that's not to say that that can't be remedied with uh, with somebody smarter than, than I am and you know learning how to make those uh, drones work more efficiently so you don't you're not working one operator to death you know where the machine is doing a lot of its processes itself coming in docking recharging reloading itself and you don't have an operator standing over top of it having to reload it and yeah. to pull the battery every time you know seems super unhandy and you know i mean like if uh, if it was one man pulling a weed out there he's got to go to bed but a robot you know if uh -huh. he's out there 24 hours a day pulling weeds he can probably pull a significant amount of weeds in a season you know uh -huh. when solar is keeping him charged and uh, he doesn't have to sleep or eat he's just pulling weeds i, th I mean i think just uh you know the harvesting and planning and working ground process just because you encounter so many things in the field that are obstructions. Unexpected. Yeah, unexpected trees falling, uh, ditches in places that you didn't expect there to be ditches, um, maybe something that a chisel plow or a disc pulled up that you didn't know was there, like a big rock or, um, you know, I think that's a challenge for those just because, you know, if it's never been mapped out in the field and the, and the computer can't identify it as being an obstruction and it combines or it plants through the rock or whatever, you know, and then you ruin uh, or have a major breakdown in the combine because the computer didn't identify a 150-pound rock, you know, <laughs> to me is a humongous challenge. And I don't know, maybe the, there's engineers that can say, hey, we've already, we've already solved that issue, but um, like as far as I know, that, that's still an issue. Uh, I think also another issue is going to be... Um, just the ability to, uh, like, with any of these automated systems, we know that we're going to have to have mechanics capable of fixing the problems with these automated systems, and uh, all of us being up to speed enough uh, mechanically uh, and tech and tech wise to be able to, you know, fix those things in a timely manner is going to be another issue. Just yeah. We're not high enough trained yet, I don't think, skill set wise, um, to you know successfully manage a fully automated fleet of equipment. I don't feel like. Mm -hmm. So I think that's going to be a major challenge with automating, uh, you know, the fleet, the nationwide fleet, I guess. So uh, uh, recently, President. Trump got reelected to a second term, and uh, you know one of the significant changes uh, that we're going to have is um, Robert F. Kennedy is is going to have a pretty high position uh, in either the National Institutes of Health or um, the USDA or maybe a combination, and uh, you know he is uh, very interested in going away from a lot of the highly processed foods that Americans are eating currently, which I think is a significant change we all need to be making, and a, a humongous problem uh, countrywide that we need to be addressing 
and, and obesity and uh, like all the chronic diseases um, a lot of that is due to poor poor diet and just eating grains and stuff all the time and hey I know I'm a grain farmer or whatever but I realize that processed food are a problem um, so as we're going forward in the next few years with this new administration we're going to probably see some major changes uh, come up on the grain farming industry and um, and within the food industry and because of that us as farmers are going to have to take a look in the mirror and um, there will always be a place for grain farming because hey we got a lot of animals to feed but uh, the portion of grain that's been going for human consumption is probably going to be cut uh, majorly and so that's going to leave uh, another market void and uh, you know are we going to make up that with uh, fresh food uh, on our farms like are, are we going to switch over and is some of us going to you know, are the, are the major grain locations, uh, like areas that produce a significant amount of grain already, going to continue to grain farm? Uh, are some of us going to go all to fresh food? Or are we all going to go partly to fresh food? Um, I think those are all questions that have yet to be answered. And, uh, the market, you know, will dictate a lot of that. But um, I think, uh, you know, anybody that's in grain farming, uh, should keep their ear to the ground on, on these things because I think uh, over the next few months we're going to see how uh, how much of that was just um, you know political positioning and how much of it is going to be a reality like are we going to see humongous changes uh, to our food uh, production in the U.S. Uh, I I think we probably will. Uh, you know, I think that there is, uh, even without Robert F. Kennedy um, getting elected or getting uh, put in a position like that, I think people are already becoming more health conscious and realizing that, hey, uh, the food we eat is, uh, does give us a significant advantage or disadvantage to our health. Uh, here in the state of Kentucky, um, our uh, newly or about a one year elected ag commissioner has started a program uh, a department of agriculture program basically called food is medicine and uh, what he is uh, trying to do is as a ag commissioner is getting fresher more healthy foods into our hospital uh, and our uh, cafeteria lunch rooms for our children and uh, you know, just in pilot programs um, that he based his program off of, they were seeing major significant re reductions in chronic diseases in, you know, just the first year of implementation. So, um, you know, when you think about it, uh, in America, we spend so much money on health care. And, you know, if we could reduce, uh, you know, our reliance on the healthcare industry because our people are so healthy, you know, and a lot of the problems will save themselves because all that money that's being sucked up by the healthcare system can be reallotted to other places. So, um, short term, you know, I think there will be some pain uh, on the grain farms because of the change of, of, uh, of reliance on a highly processed food, but long term, it should be beneficial to our population and our farms overall, I feel like. And I feel like most farmers, you know, most farmers don't want to feel like they're poisoning the population with bad food. They want to feel like they're a, a asset to the community. And, uh, they want to produce things on their farms that are healthy for uh, their kids to eat and their families to eat and the American citizens to eat. So, short-term pain to long-term gain. Thanks for watching our YouTube. Like, share, and subscribe.